Good evening. Welcome to the regular Planning Commission meeting, Grand Blanc Township, December 7th, 2017. Please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Planning Commission members present this evening. We have Mr. Mansour, Ms. Coulter, Mr. Goldie, Mr. Brown, Mr. Gellings. Mr. Bandersky, Mr. Horsha, Mr. Yancho, and from our uh, planning consultant, Giffels Webster, we have Ms. Jill Bain. Next item on our agenda is approval of this evening's agenda. Um, any changes proposed? I have one thing that I think I'd like to add, and that is an item to discuss the January Planning Commission meeting, whether we're going to have one or not. Um, so I, I'm just thinking we'll put that in under committee reports at the end. Sure. Like an item, I guess it would be an item 8E. <clears throat> With that change, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that uh, we approve the agenda. Okay, mo motion by Mr. Bandersky that was support by Mr. Yancho. Any other discussion? If not, a vote is in order. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion passes 8-0. <clears throat> Next item is approval of the minutes of our regular meeting of November 2nd, 2017. Mr. Chairman, I have reviewed the minutes of the uh, last meeting as in front of you and found everything to be in order, so I make a motion that we approve the meeting minutes of November 2nd, 2017. Mm -hmm. Motion by Mr. Bandersky is there support? Support. Support by Mr. Mansour. Any other comments, changes? If not, vote is in order. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion <clears throat> passes 8-0. Next item on our agenda is an opportunity for public comment. I don't think we have anything this evening that has a public hearing. Is that correct? Correct. So if you would like to address the Planning Commission uh, directly about anything, now would be the time. Anyone in the audience that would like to address the Planning Commission? Yes, I would. My name is Jim Bush. I'm at 5243 Lethbridge Road. I want to take a minute and talk about the same club proposal. Uh, was at the township board meeting when they presented and initially I want to say I'm for it I am for the gas station there, but I'm concerned on the location that they proposed That location has a lot of traffic through it, and there's actually two entrances into the complex I, I would propose that we look at an alternate location possibly to the side of Sam's Club I was actually there on Black Friday shopping with my wife. There was almost no one parked on the side And I say that for a couple reasons one. I think it's a bigger area they could put it in, and two, I think the traffic flow would be better. And I also commute a lot to Bloomfield Township, where I work, and I stop at Sam's Club to get gas frequently. There's always cars lined up waiting to get in, where if you put it at the initial location, you're going to have the tendency of cars to back up into traffic, and I think that would cause a problem. Where if you move it to the other side, if it does back up, you're not going to be backing up into traffic. So I just want you to think about that and consider that when you're going through the proposal. Got a question for you. When you yes, say sir. the other side, I'm not... When you're facing Sam's Club to the right that faces Saginaw, so there's a strip right there. Yep. Okay, right up against Saginaw. Almost no one parks there, and even on Black Friday, there's a handful of cars there. And I guess it's probably more employees parking there. That would be my suggestion. Okay. If you look at that area, it's about the same size as what they have in uh, Auburn Hills for their Sam's Club. So you could actually put it there and have the same size and allow the traffic not to back up into, into the through fare. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. For your comments. Anyone else like to address the Planning Commission? If not, we'll close the public comment portion, bring it back up to the Planning Commission. 
Um, next item on our agenda is correspondence. We have a planning and zoning. Um, magazine, I guess we call it, um, in our packet. Any other correspondence beyond that? I know there were a couple from our planner, but we'll get to those later on the agenda. Next item on our agenda is old business. And under old business, we have special land use 17004, place of worship, Seventh-day Adventist Church. This was tabled from, is that correct? It was October, it's been that long? <laughs> Uh, is there someone here that's going to make any kind of presentation regarding this? Or? Come up, come up to the podium, please. Um, we had previously Excuse submitted. Me. Please state your name and address. My name is Sid Smith. Um, my address is 2382 Hauser Road, Holly, Michigan. I am the building chairman for the uh, Grand Blank Seventh-day Adventist Church. And we had proposed uh, using the old academy site, Warwick Academy, uh, to use, uh, reuse two of the buildings there. One is the middle building is a, a house, a sanctuary house, house of worship. Uh, there's an existing modular unit to the Far East side that we would like to temporarily use as uh, classrooms for the kids. And there's a gymnasium in the back that we would like to use uh, as a gymnasium. And then there's an existing house that connects to that gymnasium. And it is in quite bad shape and we are proposing to um, remove that um, and tear it down. And um, based on our site plan review that we gave a little bit early, earlier, we have met th those things that you asked us to do. Um, I do have a written access easement for the parcel that states that we have access to that property from Water <coughs> Trail. Uh, we had a lighting study done, uh, and that was submitted. Uh, we provided the lot coverage calculations that was put on the plan sheet. We provided a dumpster detail enclosure. There happens to be a concrete dumpster pad at the back of the property from the previous owners. Um, as far as the easement for the sign, uh, that was to be done uh, as part of the sign approval, which we would do at a future date. And then we were to provide um, a landscaping plan, which we did, which showed all the uh, plants that we propose to do on that. So uh, with that, I'd like to ask permission that we abstain, uh, use special land use permit to be used, that property be used as a house of worship for the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Okay. Ms. Baim, did you want to comment on anything in the Giffels-Webster report? Um, only to highlight the, um, I think the, really the only outstanding issue was regarding um, the Planning Commission's consideration of the landscaping and the um, dumpster enclosure. And you had submitted a drawing of the um, wood fence dumpster enclosure. Mm -hmm. And that's up to the Planning Commission. The ordinance does require a masonry screen wall, but allows the Planning Commission to permit the wood fence. Yes. Um, pending the location, and if you feel that that is sufficient screening. Um, if I could add to that, the, the entire site has a wood fence around it. Um, mm -hmm. And so what we propose to do is enclose that dumpster with the same type of wood fence that is currently around the entire site. And I showed a picture of what, what it is that we were planning there. And I think it we had um you also request <clears throat> requested an address actually it was marked right yeah um we checked with your um assessing department and i said that that would have to go through the post office oh, and right. the post okay. office will only deal with the owner so uh, we plan on purchasing the property here in the next few weeks and when we do that we will pursue getting an address change at that time I guess, Ms. Bay, maybe you can refresh my memory. I know we went through, we did a, a site plan approval. 
Um, and I think that was a preliminary. Is that we correct? did. Yeah. That was okay. on um, November second. So we're here for the special land use, and then there will be a follow-up um, site plan review, or is that going to be? You can do that all together if you like, or you can. Do I just didn't didn't see it on the. You actually can't no, approve the special land use no. until you've approved the final site plan. So those would have to be done together. Okay, I just didn't see it on the agenda of the site plan. They would be, yeah, they would be together. If you were inclined to do that. Okay, any comments from planning commission members? Mr. Manser? Chairman Young. Um, Ms. Bame, I guess I have uh, quite two questions on this. You could help probably most knowledgeable. <clears throat> Within the current, um, was it medium density multiple family dwelling zone? Are there any other instances in which um, this this type of uh, use is, uh, you know, in in that kind of a zoned area? You know, that's a very good question that I don't have an answer to. What I can do is I can show hopefully if I can connect. I could show you the zoning map, which we don't currently have up here, um, and show you the areas that are designated for MDM, and maybe that'll others who know where some of these places are. So let's see if this comes up. But in, in general, mm -hmm. a uh, place of worship is allowed in just about any mm -hmm. zoning district, right? right. Yeah, I know we live in the Ottawa Hill subdivision, and there's a mm -hmm. uh, church in the subdivision right you know, off um, Benton Road. So it's not incompatible with what we've done in the, mm -hmm. in the past? No, the ordinance allows it. <coughs> in general terms, the special land use to say, is there anything unique here? That right. That we yeah. I, so maybe while it comes up, I have one, one other question. The, uh, uh, the issue uh, raised in your November 29th letter about uh, the building, I mean, sorry, the fire department uh, interaction with this, they had made some comments. Uh, it's just on the second page. Um, about uh, the condition of the buildings and is there any further action required there? Um, the applicant, we've talked about this, that all of the requirements that we had, the Planning Commission had set forth of the previous um, mm -hmm. application would apply here and, and yes. we've reviewed that and you're amenable to all of those. And we would take care of all that regardless <coughs> of whether yeah. they had is good or not. Goldie. In my understanding that to get a certificate of the occupancy, they're, they're going to have to do anything that's substandard. They have to bring everything up to code to get any Correct. kind of occupancy. Correct. Yes. So they'll be covered in anything in that. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to clarify the point that you raised earlier. Are we looking at just the special land use, or are we also looking at well, approval I, of the final our site plan? I think based on... The discussion if we we might as well go through and look at the site plan first and then we'll take a separate vote on each okay. you've taken a look at the list of items that we mm -hmm. had and you're satisfied the only item you're saying we <coughs> need to discuss would be in regard to the um, Enclosure for the dumpster. Correct. Yes. I guess my comment is the location where it's at, um, and there's significant landscape screen out in front of that as well. I'm comfortable with the location and the fence enclosure. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Uh, what are your thoughts? I, I, I don't have any problems with what the petitioner is suggesting for the enclosure itself that would match the uh, already existing wood fencing. Mm -hmm. So I know that's not normally what we would like to see, but I think in this instance it does make some sense. Personally, I concur, but anybody else have any comments? Yes, Mr. Yancho. Uh, the, so the uh, site plan review committee approved the plan with these uh, seven conditions. Yes. Um, 
I'm assuming that they looked at the uh, parking situation. Are there sufficient parking on site? Yes. And the applicant was going to be repairing and resurfacing the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Yes. Restriking. And that's shown on the, uh, I think it's C2 on the landscaping plan. We call out the parking, the new parking, and striping on that. And there was a requirement on how many parking spaces we would need based on the size church we have. And I think we met all those conditions. Try to come up with a longer list, but we couldn't. So. <laughs> we did well, work to, very diligently at that, Mr. Chairman. I have to say that anything would be an improvement in that Almost area. Almost anything, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we met with the uh, a demo contractor. <clears throat> And uh, you know, we're just waiting on a price because you have to have asbestos inspection. Uh, there's asbestos and the cost goes up. But that would be one of the first things we did. And I think we spoke with the, uh, some of the residents around there and they, they would really like to see that building come down. And it's unsafe. We, would, we want it to come down as soon as we can. And the, uh, all three buildings will be brought up to code. Correct, Matt. That's correct. correct. Chairman Gallant. Mr. Manser. <clears throat> so is the next step here uh, from a site plan review standpoint, someone making a motion to accept it? Is that? Yes, with uh, whatever conditions mm -hmm. that we still may still need to put on there. One, I would identify that we've uh, find the uh, enclosure acceptable as presented. Um, I think I would maybe also include that just there's verification of the items on the list uh, previously are checked off by um, Giffels Webster just to confirm that everything is, I haven't seen everything, that's all, so. Yeah. So if there isn't any other discussion, the motion would be in order at this time. Uh, Mr. Chairman, regarding uh, special land use number 17-004, place of worship, uh, the Seventh-day Adventist Church would be at uh, 9127 South Saginaw Street, and their request for the special land use be uh, approved based upon all of the requirements that we've talked about that are listed in the uh, November 29th um, report from Giffels Webster to the uh, Planning Commission. Mr. Brown, I want to clarify what I'd like to do is take a vote first on the oh. site plan. Okay. okay. So. I'll make that motion. So, okay. Site plan, was it 1032? Is that what the other references? Is that correct? Um, uh, is, it yeah. is it her letter? Yes, 1032. Yes, Seventh day Adventist Church at 9127 South Saginaw. Uh, Recommend approval per the conditions in this letter or any previous conditions. So this board can make the approval of this yeah. of the site plan. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're making a motion for approval. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and I would. We discussed this, but I just want to clarify: your motion includes um, that you find the submitted enclosure for the dumpster acceptable. And then you would also like to have uh, Giffels Webster go through the site plan, a previous site plan review list and their letter just to confirm that everything's been done. Yes. We've got a motion by Mr. Goldie. Support, Support by Mr. Yancho. Any other discussion? Now the vote is in order. All those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes 8-0. Now would be uh, that was appropriate. <laughs> I was lumping them together, Mr. Okay. Chairman. <laughs> so in this case, uh, regarding special land use number 17-004, the place of worship, Seventh-day Adventist Church at 9127 South Saginaw, I make a motion to approve that uh, special land use. Motion by Mr. Brown. Is there support for that? Support. I think I saw Mr. Mansour first. <laughs> So there's a motion by Mr. Brown, uh, it's supported by Mr. Mansour. Um, are there any conditions on this, anyone I didn't?
Uh, no. Well, Mr. Chairman, there was an item mentioned in the planner's report on the um, setbacks, basically. It indicates that um, all of the buildings are existing, and so some of the setbacks are not in conformity with the uh, requirements of the zoning ordinance, but also explains that you know, the pre-existing use was the school, which wasn't subject to our you know, zoning ordinance. So uh, um, I don't, I mean, I. We have some discretion to, you know, to do it, or to approve this, um, even though they're, they don't meet the setback requirements. I wouldn't have any problem with that. I mean, I think we do have the discretion. I don't, do you want to include something in that if they're in the future and the new buildings are constructed, they would have to comply with the mm -hmm. current ordinance? Uh, yeah, I, I would. Uh, I would like to add that. <laughs> or what? Sure. Goal? Do you find that acceptable in your motion? Yes. Any other discussion? If not, a vote is in order regarding special land use. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion passes 8 0. Thank you. You're welcome. Next item on our agenda would be new business. We have, uh, under the planned unit development at Heritage Park, a proposed amendment. Uh, is there someone here that's going to make a presentation regarding that? Good evening. My name is Tyler Tennant, and I'm outside the Andrews Council for Sands Club. Um, don't really have a formal presentation because I understand that this particular hearing is to simply review the proposal and then perhaps make a recommendation for a public hearing before the Planning Commission. Um, this is a, uh, you're familiar with the same store, but our proposal is to um, construct a six dispenser fueling station with an overhead canopy and a small kiosk. There won't be any retail component to it. It'll be similar to other Sam's Clubs that you might have been familiar with. Um, this facility will be compliant with all of the township's dimensional and design standards. Um, just a few days ago I received from our engineer who couldn't be here tonight, he's in Arkansas, a plan about, or at least a proposed plan, and maybe Ms. Bain, you also have received it, the circulation. Yep. You haven't received that. I have some copies of that I could pass out. Um, and this may alleviate the concern of the person who commented during public comment about traffic backup. But you'll see that all of the, um, the circulation is internal. There's no connection to the outside roadways. And um, in the materials that I think you have, it, uh, this was subject to a PUD agreement executed in 2004. At that time, the PUD agreement specifically said no, no gas stations. We've looked through the minutes of that, and there wasn't any particular reason for that. That at least was in the minutes. Some of the <coughs> trustees may have specific recollection of that. I wasn't around at the time. Uh, on that on this particular project but the primary reason for the addition of this now some 12 years later is because it, in recognition of the significant changes that are occurring in the retail environment um, beginning in the late 1990s and accelerating to the to the present there's been pressure on big box stores to add fueling facilities as a matter of fact um, I don't believe there aren't many Sam's Clubs anymore that are built without fueling facilities. And um, 
stores like Kroger's and Costco and other big box retailers are adding fuel facilities to their store. It's basically a drives membership. Um, and it is something that's pretty ordinary for big box stores these days, whereas in 2004, it, it probably wasn't. Um, we submitted some materials that summarize all of this. But really, I think the purpose tonight is to, I can take your questions back to Sam's Club in preparation for a public hearing. Uh, we received Ms. Bames' report. It had some suggestions in it, and we're going to follow up with her on those. Um, those are all good suggestions, and I know that the folks that are involved with this project are um, interested in moving forward and working with Ms. Baim on that. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to take them if, if I can answer. Any immediate questions? Well, just okay. some, uh, go ahead. Oh, I, I just have a procedural question. Um, this went before the Township Board in? No, November. November, mm -hmm. okay. And then what is the, what are we being asked to do? To make a, a recommendation? This is, what? yes, this is um, the for initial request for a PUD anytime there's a change proposed it goes to the Township Board and they make a determination as to whether they feel it's a minor change or a major change. And in this case, because it was specifically excluded two different places in the development agreement, the Township Board felt it was a major change and that requires the process to essentially start over again. So this is the conceptual discussion about the proposal and if you are so inclined, you can schedule a public hearing if you feel like you have enough information. Um, schedule a public hearing for whatever your next meeting <coughs> date might be. Okay. Um, which maybe we should have moved that discussion up ahead. <laughs> well, I, I would expect the responses to your memo and working with our engineers, it's not going to be the first part of January. So maybe February. Yeah, I, I think okay. so. Just as a comment, I, I think a public hearing makes a lot of sense yes. to me because, I mean, this is a, a major project mm -hmm. that when it was originally proposed generated, you know, a huge amount yes. of. Um, public concern, so I would certainly like to hear what the public has to say about this proposal. And especially <coughs> since we've had some gas, very controversial we gas have station. Had, we've had, we've um, had about 50-50 in terms of controversial and not so controversial, at least in terms of the way they were handled by the applicants themselves. Yeah. Uh, but there are some other issues, but you had a question. I just wanted to get your input, if there's something on your report you wanted to kind of highlight. Well, or? I did want to talk about the process, so I'm glad that you brought that up. And then um, the gentleman's comments about the circulation was a, co a concern that we share as well. And we appreciate the schematic of um, the circulation. And what you've given us to this evening, and we'll share that with you if you're interested later, is really just relating to the gas station itself. And I think what we want, would expect to see is really how the entire circulation on the site works, because we know that there's some challenges that you have there. Um, that have Understand. appeared over time. Um, and there have been some changes since the original um, PUD has, was laid out and established. So that should be addressed in terms of really the internal traffic and circulation. And we put that in our, our note as well. Those, those were the big things. The market information that illustrates both the need for the fueling station in this location you gave, I think, with your uh, information, at least in terms of the fact that, well, <coughs> I guess the market information that you provided was really very specific to how it benefits Sam's Club, which is fine. But I think it also should demonstrate that there aren't any other gas stations in the immediate area that could serve this the need that you find in this location. Um, and that evidence that such a use won't detract from other uses in the shopping center. So those would be our primary concerns about information that we would like to see before um, the Planning Commission. One of the other things, if I recall correctly, is a traffic impact statement. Mm -hmm. Correct. I'm guessing that may be part of what would take you till February. Yeah, it'll take a while. Yeah. Mr. Manser? Yeah, Chairman Gelling. Um, so we had the discussion about this, and Ms. Bain brought it up just a minute ago about specific exclusions in the original. Um, PUD on this and uh, I don't know if anyone has any of the background of that or whether we're still kind of digging into that but um, I'd be interested to know what what was the rationale behind speci specifying that well at the time I think the township and those of you who were on the Planning Commission please speak up about this issue um, but I think there was a real concern that 
there was an opportunity here to do something really unique and special and very high quality um, that focused more on the retail user, um, not as much as to being an auto-oriented shopping center. So it was, I, I don't know that I would go as far as to say it was pedestrian oriented, but at least not automobile oriented. And so you saw at the time a, pro, a exclusion of drive-through uses and an exclusion of many types of auto-related services, including gas stations. There were some exceptions, I think, at the time for the uses along the back, like the Walmart that had the auto center, um, because that was going to be in the back, and it didn't really, it wasn't a separate standalone use. Um, and so I think that was the, the thought process at the time, um, is that this would be more of a retail um, destination type shopping center rather than an auto-oriented shopping center. But as you know, the drive-through, we have the Panera drive-through. Um, that was something that the Planning Commission approved mm, two years ago, I think, mm, yeah, about, about the, one or two. If my memory serves me correctly, it was Chairman Gellings and myself are the only are you, two people who yeah. are the old the geezers that have been here that long. Huh? And Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson yeah. is not here. Mr. Johnson is not here, but he was also <coughs> yeah. No, I think what Ms. Beam has summarized is probably accurate. Mm -hmm. We had some concerns. At I think the township board as well. So, um, I've got a question, and I don't know. I think when this development was first put in, it was anticipated, and I don't know what the ratio is of traffic that comes in off of Saginaw versus Dort, but I, it seems like Dort was Highway was viewed definitely as a secondary. I see an awful lot of traffic that comes down Dort Highway with access to that side, but it seems like it's difficult at night to see this entrance. Very uh, difficult. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you're right. It needs some sort of additional, even if it's low level lighting, lower level lighting, something to identify that because it's it's easy. You see people starting to make a turn in, <coughs> in the wrong location at night. I don't know if that's something that can be addressed as part of this or not. I yes, don't know, absolutely. Well, and that's directly tied in with the gas station because it's so close to that entrance. So I think that's definitely something that you'd be asked to. Yeah, we could definitely look at that. Yeah, yeah I was I, unaware I, of that I, issue. I don't know what the answer is. I'm not saying I want a bunch of high, you know, super illuminate the area, but it's, you're almost past it and slamming on that's your true. brakes if that's you're coming true. from the north. I think it's because the illusion that if you come up to that going south, Oh, yeah. just think the <coughs> light. The, the yeah. light. The light's got to be the way to get in. Yeah. And you go, oh, there it is. And that's, it's just a unique how the entrance is before the light. Right. Chairman. Right. Um, go ahead. I was, I was going to say, it's going to be even more important as the um, Dort Highway extension uh, comes on and becomes yes. more right. use. Exactly what I was So. Because um, that's a state road right now. <coughs> and I don't think there's any illumination <coughs> along it or little or none. No, no, no. A long door highway as it exists right now, and I, and I do not sufficient. Right. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah it, it's it's certainly insufficient from my perspective. I think, as Mr. Goldie said, the majority of the light and the signal is a little bit further yes. south, and uh, the actual entrance gets missed. So, and, and I think when this was originally laid out, it was anticipated that a the vast majority of traffic was going to come off of Saginaw Street. But I think as local residents learned how to get here, there's a high percentage that are coming in off of Dort Highway. Something to take back, I guess, as part of that. You bet. Mr. Horsha. I have a question. Um, is it our uh, requirement or responsibility to look at this from uh, a use standpoint, the, the, ne the necessity for another gas station on this end of the township? Yes. Because, you know, when I drive around there and I drove through there and looked at this, there are a lot of gas stations within a mile square, a lot of them. You know, and I'm just curious, what's the need? Or is there a need or is this? And I think that's what we want to get a, get a little bit more information. They're going to present some market information, um, get a traffic study. I think our major item for us to do tonight is set a public hearing date bring the public in, get their input, and uh, valid point. Mr. Bandersky. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, 
looking at the analogy of Costco, one of the needs would be a lower price. That, you know, <laughs> Sam's Club would have a lower price gas, and people would go out of their way from the other local gas stations right. to come for a nickel lower, a quarter or something like that. Mm -hmm. So okay. that'll be a driving force to customers, I think. Mr. Bandersky, can I build upon your fear? Yes, sir. Um, I was over in Flint Township today, or yesterday, I should say, uh, doing some, uh, running some errands over there, and um, uh, for I was near where the Sam's Club and Walmart is on Corona Road, and all of that sort of stuff. And I'm kind of building what you're saying, and I'm I'm a price sensitive kind of person, as it relates to gas or maybe everything. And um, so I, I was there and I filled my car up, and uh, my wife's car, I should say. And um, I, the price for regular gas there was uh, $2.29. And um, I looked around because right around where on Corona Road, there, um, like Mr. Horshey was saying, there were uh, six to eight gas stations with probably within a quarter mile of Sam's Club. And what I observed is that because of the price sensitivity that Sam, Sam's uh, Club uh, gas stations emit, it's driving the other gas stations to try to compete and driving their price lower. So I said earlier, I noticed that it was 229 On the way here tonight, I began looking at the gas stations coming from where I live, down Saginaw Street, and the same exact price was literally at every one of these stations for regular in Grand Blank is two dollars and fifty nine cents. I that that I uh, I don't think I had you have to be a big mathematician, but I look at not necessarily so much about the gas station, but if a gas station were there like a Sam's Club, it's going to cause competition within the community, and frankly. If you're saving 20 or 30 or 40 cents compared to what you're paying right now, that's putting that money right in your billfold or your pocket that can be spent at other retail establishments in the community. And it looks to me, I use Gas Buddy a lot, Grand Blank is probably the highest in the entire county. It's the worst. And uh, I'm going, what's the deal here? Well, it'll also drive the others down. No, it that's absolutely will, Mr. Mr. Van Dersen. It, it will. It's going to force these people who are now charging 20 and 30 and 40 cents a gallon more because you live in Grand Blanc to compete. There's nothing wrong with competition. So it sounds like you're suggesting that we schedule a public hearing. There we go. <laughs> well, if I you want the words of my mouth, Mr. Chair, yep. I'm just, just interpreting what I'm hearing. <laughs> Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Yancho. Um, in regard to the uh, circulation situation, I'm a little bit concerned about um, the fill trucks um, and their ability to maneuver in these tight quarters. Um, are these parking spaces that um, in the adjacent double-sided, are those going to be eliminated? Will those still be parking spaces? I see that we're u utilizing the parking spaces immediately next to the proposed station um, those are going to be entrances but um, you know there's those trucks have higher turning radiuses uh, mu much higher turning radiuses and I wondered uh, what the proposed hours for the station to be open would be and if there was possibility to have a restriction on the fill hours for the trucks Anything's possible. I think right now we're just giving some advice, some items that should be addressed. Uh, I don't know all the answers, but I know that the proposed hours, and we went through it with the board, and I think it's like an hour before, an hour after the store is open. Um, but we certainly could, and I know at other locations we have limited um, truck fill hours. In terms of the parking spaces, I know that we're losing a few, that we propose to lose a few back there. But I don't know the exact configuration. So it might be good to show the truck routing yeah. on the, on the well, site. The turning radius. Definitely. Turning radius, exactly. Yeah. yeah, the turning radius, right. One of the other issues that has come up frequently over the last year 
two have been overnight um, parking in the parking lot and that's a concern of the township yeah the, I know Sam's Club prohibits it and especially in communities like yours that don't allow it um, so if we need to up the enforcement on that or whatever we can do I'm sure we're be more than glad well, I've complained many times it looks like a truck rodeo yeah that's that good it really does <laughs> Chairman Gowing, I, I suppose this will come up at a, maybe a little bit later time, but this, um, um, the actual physical location of this sets right uh, now on, or would set on some green area that's, uh, that's just to the uh, east of the CCs, et cetera. And so I guess one of the questions would come up, is there some way to kind of give, uh, I don't know, kind of give some thought to some kind of... Uh, decorative or some something there to kind of um, you know kind of make it as as, as less ob obtrusive as possible so I, I'm sure Thinking maybe like some landscaping. landscaping or I mean something I, I don't know yes we might want to go above what the minimum ordinance requirement yeah anyway thank you <clears throat> anyone else So do we have a, a motion to skip? February date for your February? Oh, it's February 1st. Yeah, February 1st. That date work? Yeah. I think we can yeah, do that. You yeah. need the, your information in by mid January. First week, first week of January. First week of January. I will ask if we need to. When you set the hearing tonight, is that not movable? If we need another well, two just weeks? Gonna, I was just thinking that maybe <clears throat> what we do say is February 1st or earliest time that the applicant is ready yeah. after that date. That sounds that, makes sense. It does. Great, yes we do too. And uh, forgive me Mr. Chairman, um, I think you are prepared to do a traffic impact study, correct? That's what we have been requested to do. Right, and yeah. present that to us. Right. Can you get that to us in advance of the meeting? Yes. Christmas season. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know when we would do that. I don't think that. you'll get it back. <laughs> no, but we'll be able to observe firsthand. Oh, <clears throat> actual traffic. First hand yeah. action. And I don't know when it's feasible to do a traffic study, how quickly we can do it. I know we would want to do it, you know, beginning after the first of the year. They're going to go out there and normal do conditions, but um, somebody's going to go out there and do counts during yeah. some point. And, and this would be internal traffic study. As well, You're, the requirement is for trip generation, and that was for um, said so that we had it as uh, relative to the shopping center and pass by trips on the two abutting roadways, so both on door so and both Saginaw. on door and Saginaw, and then okay. internal and internal. Okay, I guess I would maybe make a suggestion that you also address why this location versus another location. Will do. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I was just going to make that point. When we have a public uh, hearing, there should be some kind of consideration. And then, yes or no, I mean, this is why we could if we wanted to, or this is why we can't. Of course, it's easy access off the road in the location at right. east of Sam's, uh, but there may be some other telling reasons why that's not a good spot. Chairman Gelling, a yes. question about uh, <clears throat> location of this. I guess um, the specific location of this, does it make a difference to the, um, I guess the people that kind of own the property, right? I, um, is This is a- Yeah, it's a lease. A we, we have right now permission from the landowner for this location. Um, to my knowledge, there's no other location being that has been considered, um, but we could make an inventory of those and bring those back to the Planning Commission. Okay, thank you. <laughs> if I recall, maybe Mr. Gelling can recall, um, the one parcel that would be, see if I can come up with it correctly. Um, you know, the, uh, the the portion where CC's Pizza is at, 
and then directly to the, I guess that would be south, mm -hmm. behind it, that parcel was designated for a restaurant. Was Am I right? That's kind of that, how it originally was presented, yes. And of course, nothing has been developed there. Is that a parcel that would fit? I mean, are, are you maybe you're not prepared to maybe answer well, that we're question? We're not involved in that parcel, so I don't know. I'm sorry? We, we don't lease that parcel, as far as I know. Oh, I see. It's not something that we can build on. Right? Oh, I see. Okay. I don't know who owns it. It probably is our landlord, but I, I just don't know. But that would be closer to Dort Highway? Is that it next to CCS? Here versus here. Yeah. 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 Right on yeah. Dort Highway. Actually, very close to it. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to, to clarify. Basically, we're going to have a public hearing, and then essentially we have to make like two separate determinations. First, whether or not we should um, recommend an amendment to allow a gas station, and then if so, all these other you know issues regarding the location or landscaping or any other conditions. If right. We do so decide. you'll make yes. a recommendation to the Township Board on the amendment to the PUD agreement. The Township Board will take action, and then should they approve that, change then the final site plan approval is, rests with you is it possible for us to do site plan and PUD at the same time I, I think we didn't want to do that at it first can be but, you could we can be reviewing your site yeah. plan but okay but the Planning Commission can't approve the site plan until the Township Board approves the PUD right. change okay we will keep you keep providing details on the site plan during that time period yeah, but we, if you provide all your information, township is prepared to schedule the meetings and move you along, sure. so. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion. Well, as you said, Mr. Chairman, I think I kind of did that <laughs> 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 earlier. <laughs> uh, so let's see, I need there to actually know. isn't a case number, is there? No, no, no. Regard to the so in this case, uh, I guess what we're it. looking for is a, uh, a motion to oh, no, hold we do. public hearing. It's PUD 17001. Yeah. The, the case number. Oh, there is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I was looking at the uh, schedule of public hearing. Yeah, schedule of public for, hearing uh, for proposed <coughs> amendment to the yes. PUD. Yes, thank you. We have a motion by Mr. Brown, support. No support. All right, Mr. Goldie, any further discussion? Now, I guess the motion that you're proposing is to schedule public hearing for February 1st. It is, or next whenever the date that the petitioner is, is, is prepared. Uh, prepared. I have a question. Yes, sir. The motion is for a hearing. Yes. Not whether or not. Correct. We're looking at it. Now, anything beyond a it's hearing, to public get, hearing. For a public hearing. Yeah, public hearing. It's <laughs> to get additional information to be able to make an informed decision. And so the public hearing will be set, and that'll, there'll be notice for that. It's 15 days prior to the meeting. So regardless of when that is, people will be notified. So certainly by mid-January, we'll know whether the February 1 date will work. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, just as another, since we're still in discussion, have you, um, is there any communication with any of the other tenants in the shopping center? Are you able to do that, especially the little outlot right next to you? Yeah, I'm not aware of that. Okay, that might be something that you want to pursue. Okay. Okay, we had a motion to schedule public hearing by Mr. Brown, support by Mr. Goldie. Any further discussion before we vote? Not a vote is in order. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion passes 8-0. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is committee reports. Mr. Mansour, Township Board. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to, I'd like to defer uh, till I, till after the planning and zoning update from Ms. Bain, oh, please. I understand one. <clears throat> I guess you got moved up on the agenda, Ms. Beam. Okay, so I'm not making a note. Oh, yeah. All materials. Okay. All right, I have several pieces of communication for you. Um, first, I'm going to go back to something that came up last month that you asked me to look at, and that was the Burton 
City of Burton's draft master plan. So I was able to go on to the, um, we, we had that issue where they had the map that you couldn't read in the document. So I printed out their, their proposed future land use map. This is and a then packet? That's one for you. you take one and okay. pass it down, sorry. A one of yeah. okay. And then I printed out the um, Grim Lake Township, our current future land use plan. And then, sorry, if I had gotten here earlier, I would have passed all of this out for you. And then that. Um, so I did take a look at it. Um, and then what I actually did, and I didn't print out this for everybody, but I can pass it down if you all want to take a look at it. I actually just took two, the two and clipped them together and compared across Maple Avenue. Um, and then I did go through the document, and I brought it with me in case anybody has any questions about it. But I thought there were a couple points that were important to note about their, their master plan. Um, one was their media district that they have along Saginaw Road. And um, they've had that document for some time, but they were just referencing it in the master plan. But they talked about the South District, um, which is between Scottwood Avenue and Maple Avenue, and that is right adjacent to um, the northern boundary of Grand Blanc Township. <coughs> and they talk about um, how they wish to improve that over time and um, include uh, additional gateway element items at that district, their South District, and they had a couple other ones. Um, and it seems like that would be a nice improvement for both the city and the township, and I think that's also compatible with the township Saginaw Corridor Plan, which is several years old, but I think still very relevant. Um, they do include a proposed pathway map that uh, shows the proposed pathways in the adjacent communities, which I think is nice. Um, they'll be talking about um, their own pathways. They did have one little extension um, that would go east along, or west along Maple, um, east of Saginaw. Let's see, that's not right. It's west of Saginaw. But, um, so that was one um, little area that they had shown of connectivity. So there's opportunities for more in the future, I would hope, but that was a good, a good thing that they include. They did a housing analysis for future housing demand. And I didn't have the, a the access to the appendix, which had all of the housing analysis in it. And their summary didn't say what the time period was. It had a projection of a lot of units over time, demand for a lot of housing. Um, and Grand Blank is expected in their analysis to do well in that regard as well. I, like I said, I don't know the time period in which that was forecast, but they spoke about detached homes, single family homes, duplex, triplex units, and larger format, like apartment building type housing. They also mentioned um, that there's a lot of starter home scenarios in the city of Burton and, how, and they recognize that they often when people are moving up will come to Grand Blanc Township and so they they recognize that and they're working on strategies to, to retain homeowners and renters in their community too um, and I just thought that was interesting and, and would point that out um, and then we looked at the adjacent land uses along uh, Maple Avenue and they have a variety of things particularly west of, and I don't know why I keep using the wrong directions, but I don't know, I said it right, yeah, the west side, yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> that um, are fairly compatible. They're a little bit more intense on the Burton side than on the Grand Blanc side, but I think there are some nodes that, are, that line up pretty well, including along Dort Highway. Um, it seems as though, for the most part, they're pretty much similar, um, and we didn't find there to be any um, issues with the city of Burton's plan being incompatible with the current master plan for Grand Blanc Township. That review. Yeah. So that's that. Um, Mr. Mansour asked a question about DAS, which is distributed antenna systems. Um, we gave you a memo back, well actually I don't know if you saw our memo. We gave the superintendent a memo about um, distributed antenna systems and these are the small to medium sized additional um, equipment that go on utility poles in rights of, um, communities rights of way. Um, there has been some interest in working on um, ordinance language at the township to address that from primarily from an aesthetic standpoint, but also address it from a franchise and licensing and fees standpoint. Um, 
since we talked about doing that, there's been some legislation proposed, both in the House and the State Senate, and I believe there's some federal legislation as well. What this legislation um, will do, if it's, an, if it's approved, in particular, um, Senate Bill 637 um, really limits the local control over these types of um, equipment additions <coughs> to utility poles in the community right of way. Advocates for it suggest that it will um, improve the ability of providers to install this equipment in the rights of way and um, bring internet to communities in a faster fashion. Um, those who are opposed, which include um, the Michigan Municipal League, Michigan Association of Planning, Michigan Townships Association, <laughs> say you're stripping the local communities of control over their rights of way. Um, so I've, I included some of that summary there, um, and I had to keep, I, every time I updated it, I'd have to update it again, because they had, some committee would have, would have had approved it or voted it out of um, committee. Um, but we're suggesting that, and this was in relation to um, Mr. Mansour's question about we need to be doing something about yeah. ordinance language, that we really ought to just wait and see, because it sounds like this is moving very quickly, and either by the end of the year or the beginning of 2018, it, it sounds like this legislation is moving forward quickly. So I just wanted to update you on that. Does anybody have any questions about that? I'd like to have a visual. Well, I have a visual, as a matter okay. of fact. Um, <laughs> there, was, there was some um, communication from a group of um, a variety of municipal officials, and there was a letter that went to, um, to Senate, uh, Senator Knox and what their visual is that they have provided is that the size that's allowed um, that's allowed by the legislation is roughly the size of a refrigerator. Um, and that's pretty significant to be hanging off yeah, a variety of utility poles in the community right away. Um, I can pass that down if you want to read that a little bit more. And I can email that out can to you, you as well, sure. I guess the part that I didn't understand was the six cubic feet in volume and then all other items associated with that 28 cubic foot. But six isn't too bad, but 28's getting to be, like you said, pretty it's big. a pretty good size refrigerator. It's a good size fridge, yeah. <laughs> and are, all, are they always a box? Or no. No. They can look like... A typical old-fashioned TV antenna, or what might mm -hmm. be? They sometimes they look like round things too. Mm -hmm. and yeah, they come in different sizes to mm -hmm. provide what they are. But I think that Michigan yeah. Farm Bureau was one of the organizations that may yeah. be behind this because they're they're trying to get um, uh, you know rural areas mm -hmm. more access to high speed. Right. And um, I wonder if. <coughs> There might be a compromise so that depending on the size of the community, different things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, if we only knew someone on the Farm Bureau and related I'll be to darn. I'll try and yeah. figure it out. Good. <laughs> it's 20 cubic feet. It's still three by three by three. Yeah. It's not, no, it's not that. It's huge. Three by three by three is 27. Yeah. So with this, this is what you're talking about? Yeah, so you're saying we may not have much. We may not have much authority <laughs> to make any regulations, um, and I think what the real the, the crux of it is removing the local control. And I think that most people would support expansion of wireless, especially we all have wireless devices. We have many multiple internet devices. We have the Internet of Things. We have products in our home now that rely on Wi-Fi connections. So. Everybody's interested in that, but at the same time, these are visual intrusions into the right of way, into our public line of vision, and there should be some way that the local community can control what that looks like. Big push is going to be now. We've all read it. People are cutting the cable. Hmm? It's a street. Yeah. The ESPN is firing hundreds of people every three months because they've lost 13 million subscribers. And then, for what I'm hearing, because I'm getting ready to cut it, I've done a lot of research, but now. The internet companies like Comcast knows you're going to cut their cable, so your internet rate's going like this. 
Yeah, and it, it may be, you know, we may have asked for this, brought this on ourselves, but it's, inter it's interesting from its, its restriction on local authority. Um, and it's not the first, it's, it's not even the only bill that's pending currently or been discussed recently that does that. So it's something that we all need to be paying attention. That that one. Then I have another handout for you. Another thing that Mr. Mansour asked about was master plan, and we actually talked about this a few months ago. Um, so I have this is a proposal. It's more of a scope of work, and I wanted to walk through it with you. Um, it doesn't include. This is a draft. I should have put that on there. This is really um, something that I want your input into um, before we move it forward to the township board for their consideration um, because I want to make sure that this is covering what you want to cover and if there's specific study elements in here that you'd like to make sure we address we can highlight that in the document itself um, I, and I do want to call attention to the this one picture on the inside cover of the supervisor doing a ribbon cutting I happened to find that because I was looking for a picture of an industrial building and I didn't have one in my own folder so I went looking to see if I could find one and I, I happened to Google layered technologies and and I opened this one up and I said, oh, I know, <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> and I would like to see, I, I just wanted to point that out because I think it's nice to know that the township is doing things uh, to highlight and promote businesses in the township and um, I just think that's a nice, a nice photo. Um, because that shows also, I, I kind of picked those images because it represents all the things, not maybe all of the things, but it, it kind of touches on the things that I think are important to all of you as I hear you discuss different um, land use decisions that you're asked to make. We talk about preservation of open space, we talk about homes and the quality of life here, and we also talk about business and economic development, and all of that goes hand in hand. Um, in, even on the front, uh, on page three, we talk about the planning process objectives. I know that one of the things we talked about in the past was encouraging public participation. We kind of struggled with that in our last master plan update. And we have some new tools that I think are really exciting that I think um, might help us generate more public participation. Um, we, we would propose using different, a variety of tools. So we're still having open houses, still people are welcome to come to planning commission meetings when we are discussing the master plan, um, but also trying to do other things to reach out to the community um, in different ways so that we try and hit a, cross, a good cross-section of the community. Um, key planning topics, things that I think we've talked about, housing, um, land use, community health, and what it means to be an age-friendly community. And those are some of the things we've talked about. And if there's others, I want to make sure that we get those included. And then action strategies for um, implementing master plan goals and objectives. And as we've talked about many times, a master plan is only as good as, the, as it's implemented. Um, in terms of visioning, we have a couple different ideas on that. We um, have found um, doing an initial visioning with um, elected and appointed officials and key staff to be really helpful in sort of setting the tone for a master plan process. And so we would recommend uh, the township consider doing that, doing an online survey, really just asking some basic questions like what's working, what needs work, what parts of the community do you think are doing well, what needs a little bit of help, where are areas that we need to be focusing on. Um, and, um, and from that, then setting some guiding <coughs> principles for the entire process. So we think that's something that's worth considering. Um, public engagement, as I said, I know you have talked about this in the past. Um, so we'd still do our public um, input survey, and we have gotten good responses from those in the past. Um, but we also have two, we have um, two online platforms. One is called Picture This, and the other one is called Now Hear This. So we have these two compatible online platforms that allow people to say they went to Sam's Club, and they saw a bunch of cars parked out overnight, and they said, you know what, that looks really tacky. They could take a picture of that and upload it to the platform and say, this needs work. 
Likewise, they could take a picture of the little gazebo over there, that pavilion, um, pergola covered walkway, and take a picture of that, upload it to the platform and say, I love this. I think we need to make sure we get more of this type of quality um, architectural elements in our shopping centers. Um, when they're on a pathway, they could take a picture and upload that. I love this pathway. Um, it gives people an opportunity to, to be visual and, to, and tie it to a map so we can see where people are commenting. Um, then now here, this is the same thing essentially, but it's just as text-based. People don't have to upload a picture. Um, How do they know where to do that to? That's we would have all of that available on the township's website or, or a project website if we do that. Um, we are, we've actually begun doing that, the picture of this. We have it in um, a couple different communities right now. And it's, it's a little bit slow to get started because people need to get familiar with it. But um, when we've shown people how to do it, we, we actually we were at a, a community open house and I was showing somebody how to, she wanted to show me something about a dog park. And I showed her how to do it on her phone. And the next thing I knew, the next day, there were like eight pictures on there of this <laughs> dog park that she submitted. It was really cool. Um, so those are kind of. Are there other locations that make sense in addition to the township? project site to let people know I just asking that question well I'm not sure how often people go to the township the township website yeah. uh, and I know I know there's a there had been a Facebook page I don't know if it's a official Facebook page or if it's, a, it's both, both. Um, it's a good way to get information out to people I think the other thing would be actually asking each of you and the township board members to send it out to 10 people that you know there's a, there's a new app. I don't know if anybody here is, uses it, but it's called Next Door. And um, Next Door has seemed to be gaining a lot of traction. Uh, and the police department, Township mm. Police Department, uses that as well mm -hmm. to uh, communicate things yeah. to people. So those might be good places to at least announce it and then link it back to the Drive it back website. to the website, Facebook. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, I mean, there are a lot of people that either, you know, aren't on Facebook mm -hmm. or, you know, right. um, don't use apps and that. I'm wondering, but I mean, everybody gets utility bills, for example. Is mm -hmm. there some way that, you know, maybe you, with the next, you know, mailing of utility bills or something, mm -hmm. you could also There's attach a, a little, yeah. you know, information about what we're doing with the master plan? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, people will read, you know, they'll yeah. look at the utility bill. Right. Um, well, some of the people in the township don't get utility bills from the township. Oh. Okay, but just received on Monday the township newsletter. Tax bill. Yeah. You know, that, that could be done that way. Yeah. You know, a specific newsletter with that yeah. content. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. Because I know in there, it talk, this is now <coughs> Saturday, and it's, it talked about the rubbish pickup is done yeah. as compared to <laughs> having a little advance notice, maybe, to say, yeah. I better get it out there. But anyway, yeah, so, that letter, which right. was a four-page letter. Yeah, that would be. I mean, it doesn't have to be four pages. How often does, I don't know how often that goes out. Quarterly, or? Uh, does it just go out with the tax bills? I can't yeah, remember. I think that's what it was, or oh. maybe twice. Well, the tax bills maybe twice, because it talks in there about the yeah, taxes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so maybe both, out and both mailings when they send yeah. out the uh, tax forms. Mm -hmm. Plus, we do have a newspaper in town. We have someone That's who's serious. frequently here writing great stories about what the Planning Commission is doing. <laughs> so we can tap into that resource as well. Um, and then obviously the public open house, the standard uh, tool that we, that we have used. We talked about, I think a couple, several months ago when we talked about scoping out a master plan, um, we had talked about maybe trying to do something in the different quadrants of the township. And I don't know if that's still something that you're interested in. Um, and there's, I think there's a variety of ways we could do that. It doesn't necessarily have to be, um, but just in saying that we want it to be cost efficient and effective. Um, but if that's something that the Planning Commission wants to explore, we can explore ways that we can do that um, that are reasonable and effective. I think one of the keys is that there are electronic ways for people to mm -hmm. notice that in addision to having a visioning session might be 
sufficient. Um, I guess, well, I'll let you continue. Okay. This. So the next couple of pages are just some illustrations of how those things work. Um, and then we just get into the basic scope of work, and that's pretty straightforward. Um, task one is usually just the getting things established, just um, creating the, town, the project website. Two is existing conditions. Um, three is the market analysis, and, and we did have um, the market analysis done in conjunction with the Technology Village Conceptual Development Plan, and that was about a year ago. Um, and to update that and make sure we're covering everything that we need to cover, I think, is important. Um, looking at housing, specifically housing and neighborhoods, um, as a focus of the plan, um, and then redevelopment strategies. So picking, and through the process of public input and the planning commission and the township board's analysis, identifying maybe three sites in the township that are worth an extra deep dive into how those could be redeveloped, both from the use standpoint using the information that we gather from the market analysis, as well as creating imagery that would support it, kind of like what we did for Tech Village, um, where we showed precedent images of how something might de be developed and come up with a rough sketch of a, maybe a model of what a redevelopment might look like in that area. Um, and so to do that in a couple of different ways. And then just developing the plan um, and creating an implementation strategy and then having um, some way to <coughs> illustrate that. And I just included an example of a, a poster that we did for the city of Novi last year at the end of their um, master plan process. <coughs> so does this sound like what the Planning Commission is interested in talking about? Are there things that we want to make sure that we highlight, that we add in, that we haven't added in? Are you giving us a homework assignment with this? I think so. And I think that was really, Mr. Mansour, is this? I don't this think the, so. Be yes, I am. I'm asking you to take a look and give it some thought. Is this what you had in mind when you asked for like a time frame and, and an initial discussion about How long is this going to take? And that's what's going to do it, I would think. Well, yeah. I have that at the, at the end. Okay, it's about a, it's a little over a year long process. So that was a, so to answer your question, yes, this is the kind of uh, document I think we wanted to start with here. Um, to get an idea of, of what's involved with this, some of the steps, and importantly on the back page, the timeline. Is it the thinking that each one of these periods, these these uh, one, two, th one mm -hmm. through 13 is like a month? Is a that month, I should like? have put that in there. So I, yes. um, <clears throat> so I think it's important that we get this thing kicked off because you know here we are, probably not gonna get done until January of 19. Right. I mean that, and I would, uh, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to see if we could maybe accelerate that so we could at least get it done in, in 18 at some at some end of the year or whatever. But yes, this is this was what I was looking for in terms of that. Um, I'd also like to, uh, I guess we'll flesh through this a little bit more, but I think the early visioning is good, but I really want to create opportunities for the public, uh, both residents and businesses, to have an opportunity to, you know, kind of, get involved, get excited about it, and get mm -hmm. some input because they'll be ambassadors for for us as we try and get this uh, through the rest of the process. Thank you. Nothing changed since we did our plan. There'd be no reason to really do any kind of update. So I think I'd like to focus on what's changed since we, are quite a few things have changed. So. Uh, that's changed. Yeah, what I mean, press <laughs> that is, okay, this is a change. How does I mean, the, the other uh, point that this ties into is that the township has a number of uh, strategic initiatives regarding attractiveness for business, mm -hmm. attractiveness for, you know, residents, and, and, and just kind of a number of these things that, you know, we ought to find a place to tie into the master plan or to actually get concrete things in line to, to kind of go help us execute those. Wasn't there a study done, a 2020 vision or something, back in the 80s or 90s? Dick that, Clark or Dick Gray. It seems to me that. Was it 2020 in the city? Mm-hmm. With the city. It was right. the city, yeah. Right. City. Seems to me that um, the, the thoughts and objectives of that period might be worth looking at, looking back at, and it kind of give us a 
reference point what those people looked at at that time frame and what we're trying to look at looking forward what they thought and how it kind of developed and what we're talking about and how it may develop or may not just thought I was just curious whether that's worth uh, looking at I think the vision 2020 back at that point was also um, the one of combining the township and the city, city. yeah so that was a big a big focus of that 2020 which failed I think part of it also was to determine whether or not it would benefit the township to change its uh, form of government or its, its city structure for the purpose of obtaining different things like gasoline tax and so on for roads. Ms. Bain, I apologize, I'm an engineer. The specific homework assignment oh. <laughs> is to read this document, mark it up where appropriate, and respond back to you. Is that correct? Well, yes. Would the Planning Commission like to discuss it one more time before we submit something to the Township Board? Well, then, yes. Sorry, guys and yes. <laughs> so this will be on the agenda in uh, January or February meeting. Yes. And we'll, we'll, do we'll that. talk Put about that on it the from agenda as feedback yeah. from the and proposal. And then, is it, was it um, your direction that I look at what's changed since the 2012 master plan? Or the amendment, the 2010? I think they were personal. I don't know. There we go. Yeah. I'm not paying for it, so. <laughs> I think you could squeeze that in. I, don't I have, worked on I don't them, so a, I, I don't it, have should, the funds it, it won't be completely foreign to me. I'll, I'll recognize some of the language in there. What I do think will be interesting are areas that we didn't really talk about. So that's kind of what I'm going to look for. What was missing from those? Not so some of what's changed, but what didn't we talk about then that we well, should talk I mean, about now? Obviously, the Dort Highway extension is something yeah. that's new. What's the impact of that? I know that in one of your previous master plans, um, you had the big rural, uh, like rural heritage core, like rural <coughs> corridor, mm -hmm. and you had an idea about large setbacks on certain roadways, and that didn't really go anywhere. But um, it'd be interesting to talk about that again. What I think will be interesting is, is, you know, I think the focus on housing will have changed since 2010, your previous master plan. Okay, I think yeah. at one point. We developed a list of goals and objectives, yes. you know, some were short term and some were longer term, and many of them, you know, didn't go yes. anywhere, basically. Yeah. Um, I think we ought to take a look at some of those and see whether or not we, you know. Why didn't they? Yeah, mm -hmm. why didn't they? Or, yeah, and that would be part still of the, something we should really focus on. Definitely part of the update process for the master plan is a discussion of goals and objectives and what's changed since the last plan. Um, and that falls into, like, kind of the middle, after you get a bunch of public input. Um, and you've had some time to study existing conditions, and that, that's when we go into those goals and objectives and really look to see what still makes sense. Our, our um, efforts in master plans recently has been to consolidate goals so that instead of having many goals, you have just a few, and then have the objectives much. really relate to, to mm -hmm. those. And sometimes they can have cross-references to yeah, others. And I think at one some previous meetings too we talked about not only shortening the goals but making them more specific instead yes. of saying things like encourage or you know yes. things like that something much yeah. more specific. and actually for um for the city of novi's master plan we changed it to even within those zoning action items draft zoning language that does this this and this and then the next one was we still wanted to encourage some things <laughs> but that came under a heading we called advocacy and then, and then that shows who, who's doing that, who is encouraging. Is it planning commission is encouraging? Probably. Is it staff? Is it the township board? It might be. And so try to highlight those things too. That um, makes sense. Yeah. So, and I'm kind of thinking now that there should be another category, another category heading that's standards and guidelines. Because sometimes you may not want to make an actual ordinance, but you still want to guide people in the right direction. So that there might be that as an item as well. As you were... Um, it 
came to my mind that maybe the reason some of these things, if you create a list of here's the stuff we want to do when we walk out, but there's no assignments that, like you said, mm -hmm. okay, this is what the planning commission is going to do, this is what the township board is going to do, this is what staff's going to do, then probably, right. probably one of the reasons anyway why things didn't. And, and one of the other issues too is that the, there were limited resources available for planning and implementation over the last mm -hmm. several many years. Um, so our, our thought, and when we started doing that with you, that exercise of prioritizing those objectives and trying to figure out, we did, we did knock out a couple easier things at the beginning of that. Um, and then we got to the point where it just wasn't really, we didn't have the resources to be able to do some of the other things. But it's, we'd like to try to bring that back so that it's oh, easier yeah, we to had a major focus things. on the tech village um, yeah. project yeah. yeah that was a big one to get uh, done that took a lot of resources yeah, yeah. chairman Kelling, I, <clears throat> two comments please um f first uh in terms of the homework assignment i think you know we're kind of i guess in my my view kind of getting to this a little bit later than i wanted to so maybe there's more concrete uh, homework assignments in terms of, of really looking at the things that this Planning Commission wants to prioritize in the um, uh, in the master plan and and with experience and in our background and kind of getting those you know into the system a little bit earlier. And the second thing is in terms of uh, being able to make uh, uh, assignments, action, and getting things implemented. You know, the most cost-effective way for us to do that is to get these things into the budget process uh, pretty early so we're not having to add to it. and We can kind of integrate those into the existing funds. So um, that means that, you know, funds are available, people know what to do, they're on staff, et cetera. So, again, that kind of leads us to try and, and kind of push this thing along so that, you know, October, November, when we're re looking at and approving budgets that we have... Uh, that we have these things knitted together. Yes, good point. <clears throat> if you're to uh, republish this, mm -hmm. I have a suggestion. Yes. <laughs> and I look at the page, page two, yes. and there's a bunch of pictures. There are. But there's no references to what. There's none. They, and you're just supposed to know where they are because they're all in yes, Grambling Township. Yes, and the same thing on page three with the entrance to the uh, <laughs> Those are so from Grambling Township as well. And I could tell but you, I, Perry House should I be recognized back, by everybody. Yep. I go to page seven, and of course you show a, a picture of Rochester College. Yes. And then you have a little script underneath that identifying what it is. My only thought would be to have... Uh, that kind of small under each of these pictures. Okay. Because not, I would guarantee that probably 50% or so of people that look at this won't know what that is. Okay. Okay, just like the ribbon cutting. Yes. I mean, that was covered in the uh, Grand Blank Township, uh, uh, the Grand Blank News. But, Good point, again, just looking at that, you know, where is it? My suggestion. Thank you. I appreciate that. Is there, is there a way, and I'll just put more on you, but is there a way to get like email reminders every so often? Mm -hmm. Hey, don't forget, yeah. you're supposed to get me. Yeah. A lot of times the stuff just kind of, with everything else, the distractions you've got every day that. Great idea. It's out of our focus. It happens. You know, those retired guys who get all the time. Yeah. <laughs> what, you Anything mean, else? You mean those all retired right. guys do all the work? Is that what you're trying Absolutely. to say? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Mansour also asked a question about the tree protection ordinance. And I would like to ask Mr. Mansour a question about the tree protection <laughs> ordinance. And that is, has the township board, so that, uh, to refresh everyone's memory, so the planning commission made some recommendations on the tree protection ordinance in terms of um, providing some waivers, providing for the tree protection fund, tree fund, giving some guidance as to how those funds should be spent to really maximize the value of both trees that are being preserved trees that are being replaced and trees um, in the community as a whole and one of the um, one of the suggestions that was made as that was going through to the township board was to create 
maybe an ad hoc committee or some sort of committee that would help direct those funds that were going into the tree, um, the tree fund um, towards education, advocacy, um, direction of what, what, how to spend those funds in terms of where trees would be replaced in the community. And I think that it would be really great to have that process in place um, to see, to, for the community to really see and the businesses to really recognize the benefit of the ordinance and the imp positive impact that we think it will have on the community in the long run. I guess that's sort of, I'm throwing it back to you. <laughs> so, so really I think that's a thing we should look at, but mm -hmm. the, the action really was more along, along the lines of connecting the tree ordinance to uh, the authority of the township to actually right. enact that. And the so township as absolutely a, does have the authority to do that through both the Planning Enabling Act and um, <coughs> the uh, provisions of the police powers of the township. And you'll f it's not something that the township just made up to do tree protection ordinances, and there are tree protection ordinances in many other communities, um, including Troy, Rochester Hills. I think you had asked a couple. Um, Bloomfield Township. Um, I, that's what those ones that are coming to the top of my head right did now. Part of this get, did this part of this get a big focus when there was a bunch of just clear cut? There was an entire subdivision that was completely clear cut. Mm -hmm. And that prompted the initial discussion 12 years ago. Um, and that's why you'll recall, if you do, <coughs> if you don't, I think I have a copy of it, um, that the beginning of that ordinance outlines all of the reasons why the township felt that this was something that needed to have municipal action. Um, so all the reasons why tree protection was important to the community. So I guess I'd, so I guess I'd, in terms of, uh, again, uh, connecting, connecting the dots in terms of the, um, um, uh, you know, the authority to do that, I guess uh, if there's some, uh, some documents that can kind of like create that trail, you know, the, the, the linkage between all those things, I suppose you'd like to have that and then uh, we can talk about, um, as you suggest, um, having a, a, a way to actually uh, get uh, some, I guess, benefit or, or kind of show more broadly what the uh, positive impact of the tree ordinance is. Yeah, I think there's some really um, positive approaches that the township can use um, in both uh, executing the purpose of the tree fund, so replanting, um, but I think also education is really important. And I think teaching people, even in just residents, how to properly maintain the trees that they have and how businesses can do the same, really about the value of trees and what they add to your property um, from an economic standpoint. Um, and then also recognizing when a business comes in and they've had to go through the process and they've replaced trees that they were required to do so, to have some sort of a recognition. Maybe it's a plaque. Thank you for your contribution to the Trees of Grambling Township. Um, to make that something that they can look at and say, you know what, this was a really, a really cool thing that we did. Or when they, they can't replace them on site and so they donate to the tree fund um, to let them know, hey, there's what we did. At the end of the year, you say, you, you let the community know, we planted 200 trees this year in this place, this place, this place, and this place, thanks to contributions from the following businesses. Um, there's a lot of ways that we can raise the awareness of that in a very positive way, and I yeah. think that's important. Yeah. Great letters of thanks for the tree. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you have anything else, Ms. Bain? Um, I think that was it. <laughs> oh, well, actually, I do have one more thing because I think it's interesting and it relates to the master plan. Um, we're working with one of our other communities, uh, DeWitt Township, on uh, becoming an age-friendly community. And that's something that maybe at a future meeting I'll bring you some more literature on or I'll send you a short article on it um, over the next month. But I think it's really, um, it's a good, it's a program through AARP. And I think it's a really good program in terms of its structure in helping communities develop uh, an action plan to accommodate people of all ages in the community. And it's addressing housing, transportation lanes, a lot of things that we've talked about, and a lot of things that um, we've talked about specifically to different development proposals that we've seen even over the last year or so. So um, just a little highlight, preview of something that might be coming. Sure, do you want to 
circle back to you. <laughs> so sure. So uh, thanks for um, addressing the master plan, the uh, the tree ordinance, and this obviously this um, uh, the DAS topic has got a ways to go uh, in terms of. Um, settling out before we're in a position to really do much about that. So that really uh, leaves uh, the trailer ordinance as the last um, item from uh, from an earlier discussion. And uh, again, it was kind of, uh, as I think I mentioned in the email, um, um, identifying kind of what's uh, the trailer ordinances that might, uh, uh, that are in next surrounding communities, kind of how their enforcement's working um, so that we can get one that, um, you know, if we have to make some modifications or anything to ours, we get one that um, creates the, you know, that we can live with and, and gets people to comply not only with what the letter, but the intent. I've got a question about your the trailer ordinances. We're talking about small or medium sized trailers in driveways in residential areas or or boats, boats or yeah. or rec Camp rec recreational or vehicles right. or that i've noticed um well first a question the township has i believe an ordinance as to the location of fences um, the fence locations on the uh, furthest forward yes. point they can be mm -hmm. which is front of the house, front of the garage. I'm asking a question, or does anybody know the answer to the question? Because I've noticed something very much along this line. Yeah, I'll have to look that up for you. I've noticed uh, in, a, in a lot of subdivisions, there is a, uh, an expanded use of side yards, usually on the garage side of houses, to pour large pieces of concrete from the front of the garage back, and they put motorhomes, trailers, boats, and that's what we're talking about. Sometimes they have fences, and sometimes they don't have fences. But what actually well, constitutes I, I, the pro uh, problem? I guess part of it's. I'm guessing it's perception, but there's a couple of things that come to mind. One is a township. Right now we have a township-wide ordinance, but then you also have local association rules that could vary from that as well that makes it a, probably seeing more variance in how things are enforced. Well, in a, in a for example, a site condo, they'll usually address this, but in a standard subdivision a lot of times you don't have a with, yeah that's common in hidden oaks and chatham square there are, are ordinary there there's a language about house sizes and that sort of thing but that was never addressed because at the time of those subdivisions development this never you know it wasn't going on but it is going on and going on more and more i would think in that case it would defer back to the general township board Right, I, I would yeah. expect that. Well, when we talked about it, it was, we identified violations, but then who's going to follow up? Who's going to enforce them? And, who's who's gonna, gonna, and what, what actually is a violation? For example, if we can't have uh, RV vehicles on the property for only so many days, is that in the front of the house, or is that from the front of the house back? Um, specified locations. Yeah. yeah. It was trying to get them out of, off the front, mm -hmm. primarily out of the front, okay. and in, in some cases off the side if it was a larger piece of property. But there's many, many violations of stuff parked in front. Right. And the, the other issue is that there was a time frame associated with it. Right. They could be, yeah. it, it was 48 hours. Mm -hmm. 48 hours? Yes. And the issue was when does 48 hours start? Which I think by policy it's been when someone calls and complains about it. <laughs> but otherwise you just can't possibly keep track of all of that. Um, and then what does moved mean? Mm -hmm. So if you back it up to me, now I'm on, I'm just, it's still a new 48 hours. So.
there was a concern about this is very very difficult to enforce and the, the staffing for code enforcement just wasn't there yeah, yeah. yeah. It isn't there full time yeah. right yeah we still probably don't i not probably we don't have people that quote enforce it. we don't we only got two inspectors at this point which raises the question and you only work four days a week. An ordinance is really only as good as you're able to enforce it. Right. And so if the Planning Commission wanted to talk about it, it might be to consider through the zoning ordinance. Right. I think it was bad. Well, too. that would raise separate problems because, I mean, I think there are a lot of people support the idea of not allowing you know, people that park big RVs and campers and boats in the driveway. And if we repeal that portion of the ordinance, then they could park them there. Yeah, and I think what we talked seven, about three. was the, um, the proximity and the availability of homeowners associations to really more strictly regulate it. Um, but then we recognize that that doesn't, not everybody in the community is covered by an HOA. Right. Right. So. Well, that goes back to Al's previous comment about mm -hmm. budget. Right. You know, and if we identify that and, mm -hmm. and it considered to be very serious, then we need to yep. allow us, you know, put budget in there so yep. somebody can enforce it. Mr. Chairman, I have one more question for Ms. Bain. Well, not in this name, it's really for the commission. And talking about follow-up and homework and so forth, <coughs> I'm reading from last meeting's minutes, which we approved earlier. Uh, Planner Bame recommended commissioners evaluate the appearance of signage along major thoroughfares expressways as it is easier to comprehend rather than on a sheet of paper and let her know what they find offensive or positive. Has that happened? That has not happened, but I did not send a reminder, so I'll do that. It'll, you'll get well, to don't, don't, don't apologize because and, you didn't send a reminder. No, and it was interesting we because have responsibilities. I, I didn't hear you go over that item on the agenda. It just never came up that it was number two on our agenda, and we didn't discuss it, which was just as well. I, I didn't really have I'm anything. sorry, Commissioner. I, I, so. I do think it helps to see things in real life. For example, uh, the... Clarence signage when you saw yes. it on an eight and a half by eleven, and they, it looks to me like it's told Mr. Brown that I thought they made the wrong decision, granted mm -hmm. too much signage until I went out and saw it. I'm like, yeah, that's more appropriate for the size of that building. Right. So, Chairman Gelling, so just to conclude uh, my um, oh, uh, report, so um, if we could have uh, some timing around when we can uh, get the follow-up on the the tree ordinance and the trailer ordinance in the next uh, couple months or whatever I think that would that would uh, that, that I, I would appreciate it and so would the uh, the township I can absolutely get you uh, an overview memo that explains the um, regulatory authority of okay. the township to do the tree protection ordinance as well as remind the township board of the strategies that we suggested to follow up with that um, as for the trailers, I guess I'm at a little bit of a loss as to what exactly you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. I think we kind of threw our hands up and said, yeah. how big is the problem? And it seems to vary by subdivision. Yeah. You know, what's not acceptable in this subdivision seems to be okay over here kind of thing. So. Yeah, and I don't know if the township board has discussed this any further. Um, and what the consensus is from the board do you is this something that the township board wants to keep in the zoning ordinance or is the township board thinking there may be another way to better regulate this I, I think there's maybe something uh, something in terms of better better way to regulate it because uh, there is not frequent but regular communication from the public to the board uh, complaints about um, neighbors uh, with uh, vehicles and boats kind of gaming the system to your point you know if you move it uh, six inches to the left uh, for two days and then six inches to the right that kind of is the letter of the law but not uh, we've, we've taken some other things and put it into like a, the general ordinance and taken it out of the zoning ordinance so yeah. we didn't eliminate it but made a suggestion that was removed and it seemed to Mr. Laddie had made some recommendations on some other things in the past that seemed to allow the township more flexibility and enforcement. So maybe that's worth. I can discuss that with him. 
Uh, and other than that, uh, I'm just looking for the FOP on those things, so um, no further uh, from the Township Board. Thank you. That brings us, uh, Ms. Boehmer, you were, you were all set, correct? I think so. Uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, Mr. Brown? Um, there, there was a meeting. Um, I happened to be absent at that meeting, but um, they had one, one uh, topic on the agenda, and that was the new Starbucks that we had approved over on Hill Road and Fenton Road. Mm -hmm. They were asking for additional signage uh, on the drive-through area, if I, as I recall, and it was deemed um, that they would not approve the additional signage, so it was denied by the petitioner's request. Was that a wall sign? They it was. Or? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I figured. That's all there was. Questions for Mr. Brown? Bring us to site plan review. We have not seen any site plans in the last month. Next item that we added was January Planning Commission meeting discussion. In talking with Maria, she said there really isn't anything currently scheduled for the agenda in January. And sounds like uh, the Sam's Club gas station won't be ready until February. So is there interest in canceling that meeting? Unless you want to talk about the master plan, scope of work, and moving that mm -hmm. forward to the township board and signs. Mm -hmm. we, we, pro I'm just gonna say, we probably should because, you know, the SAMS for, for February, you know, the agenda, is, if we have the uh, SAMS Club issues, it's going to take a lot of time, I think. And um, we don't want to get, we don't want to get like the master plan pushed to the end of right. an already busy agenda where it doesn't get the attention that it re and time that it really needs. I think so, yeah. Uh, what's what's the feeling of the rest of the planning commission members? Fine with me. Well, the suggestion is having it I'm so that town. we can have that time mm -hmm. to to discuss yeah. Yeah. the master plan. So we should come back prepared to have Comments on, on uh, yeah, I guess that's good. And I'll remind you. Okay. Just pretend we're in fifth grade or something. We need reminders to finish our homework. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> if we're prompt all the time, the reminders will go away. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. It just seems like life gets busier and busier and faster and faster. So. Um, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, if I may. To Mr. Mansour, um, I had a uh, neighbor ask me, she thought that she had read in the Grand Blank View where there was a breakfast, public breakfast uh, uh, gathering out to Genesis Conference Center where some of the folks from the township were answering questions from the community. Was she just um, totally misinformed? Uh, I, uh, maybe. Mr. Yancho, so that was answer. a cha Chamber of Commerce breakfast. Chamber of Commerce. Oh, there chamber we go. Of commerce, not anything to do with and, the township. Um, if I recall, um, uh, Nick Evans from Genesis spoke, and I don't know that anybody from the township spoke. There were two okay. people on the agenda. I planned to go. I didn't make it, um, but it was a. They talked about Door Highway and Genesis expansion. I think were two of the topics. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So that's what it was. I, I, when, when, when I was asking, when I really don't know anything about that. Obviously, you did, didn't as well. Okay. Thank you. One question I have, Ms. Bain, maybe you can help. I've had a, a resident ask at a gathering that Mr. Mansour actually heard the same request from this uh, resident. They're very into the bike paths. She's very into about bike paths. Mm -hmm. And I hope that I can remember what, she, what her question was. I guess is Hill Road going to be getting some work done? She was mentioning Hill Road. They're going to redo some things. Her her assumption or what she had thought is when roads were done in the future, the bike path would be looked at if it was appropriate. She had someone talk to her when one didn't happen somewhere, and they said, "Well, it's got to be the master plan." Well, she's looked at the master plan, and it's there. So what? I guess her question to anybody that would listen is. How does one get the bike path then? Like, if this whole road is getting done mm -hmm. and it's in the master plan, how do you get the bike path? Yeah. 
does the township have part of the parks and recreation plan as well? Well, mm -hmm. it was part of the old pathways plan mm -hmm. um, that really should be updated, and we probably should include that um, non motorized transportation component in the master plan discussion. But um, your question is who pays for it, I think, and that's town. the road commission will pay for the road. And that's what she did say. She said, talking to the road commission, they gave, and I'm, I'm well aware of this, this reasoning past that their, their, their part is the engineering part. Right. Which is, um, so that's what they'll do, but then so the township would have to pay for it. So I guess in the perfect world, if she wants a bike path, she needs to start going to the township mm -hmm. when these roads are being redone to say, hey, can we get this done? Is that? Well, I think well, in a perfect world, the township would be aware of the road improvement projects and would proactively... That's kind of what she was saying. She, yeah. And again, this is her telling me this. I don't know this. The Hill Road's getting some work done. And that I don't know, but I can find out. Yeah. I've got a question there. What, what about the Iron Bell yeah. uh, yes. funding yes. for the pathway system right there? Is that what she's thinking yeah. of? Or yeah, yeah, I, don't, yeah, I guess her, that's her point. Just like, is, there, is there funding we're not getting? Is someone not applying for stuff? Or is it, it just seems like things are getting, roads are getting well, done and no bike paths getting done, mm -hmm. and it should be. Wait, are, you talking her about, opinion. are you talking about bike lanes in the roadway or pathways? I think a pathway. That's shared, totally shared separate. So the answer is yes. Well, didn't yeah, the, the township, were, right. weren't we awarded uh, monies from the state and the feds regarding the pathway system through the township? So, I think the city. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, as part of the, the overall plan, and I believe the budget, we've got money to connect uh, the portions of the iron bell that run through the That's what I thought. the right. things but but uh, what uh, Commissioner Goldie is talking about is as a broader topic in terms yeah. of you know uh, increasing the amount of non motorized paths um, as and just taking advantage of the the um, revisions and maintenance updates that the county does in the roads okay. at the same time I was just thinking maybe the resident was thinking of what I was the iron. Well, I think I think the one thing that her main issue was is again saying this hill road is getting done. I think she's asked somebody about putting the pathway, and her response the response was it needs to be in the master plan. And she's like, it is in the master plan. It's, it's here. So why is yeah. it getting done? Well, and I think that that document is fairly old, and it seemed like it it didn't have the horsepower behind it necessarily to to be on the radar maybe. So I, I think that is a really good point. I'm glad that you brought it up because that should go into our master plan conversation too. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Baines, before, before I make a motion, I would before. just like to share with the commissioners as I was coming in this evening, going out was Mr. Bennett and looking at the nice Christmas decorations in the lobby, I asked him, when can the Planning Commission expect to see their gifts under the tree? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I'll have to work on this. So we'll we'll run. Run. Uh -huh. I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> motion by Bandersky, Mr. Bandersky, to adjourn the meeting. I heard support from Mr. Brown. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Those aye. opposed? Aye. We are adjourned at 8. <laughs> yeah. It's yours at 48 p.m. Yeah. <laughs>